So in the history of the oil industry, there have been some very, very key wells. And one that we're going to talk about today is Drake's Well. So Drake's Well is located right up in the northeast of uh, the United States of America, quite close to the Canadian border. And if we zoom in, we can see here's Cleveland, here's Buffalo, here's Pittsburgh, and the arrow here is pointing to uh, Titusville. And Titusville is the location back in the 1800s of a very historic drilling event. So it's all down to Colonel Drake, born Edwin Laurentine Drake, great name, in 1819. He lived till 1880. Uh, he was also known as Colonel Drake or Crazy Drake. He was an American businessman and he was the first to find oil. Well, that's a claim that folks make, but that's not entirely right. He wasn't a colonel, in fact. He just used that title to impress some of the locals. So Drakeswell was actually drilled by the Seneca Oil Company. It was formerly part of the Pennsylvania Rock Oil Company, formed by George Bissell and uh, Jonathan Everleth. On hearing reports that oil from a spring in Titusville could be used in lamps, uh, Bissell and Everthel were kind of making inquiries as to, oh yeah, how does that work then? So at the time, of course, whale oil was used as the uh, primary fuel for lighting for lamps. And um, once it was found that rock oil could be a practical alternative, if it could be extracted from the ground, uh, then they formed uh, Seneca Oil and, uh, in 1858. Now, Drake initially bought stock in the company, and then he happened to be staying in the same hotel in Titusville when the founders were looking to hire a prospector. So uh, he duly got involved, and uh, yeah, it's Mike Lakin. He reminds us all the time that the oil industry saved the whale from extinction. Because unless rock oil had come along, we'd have kept on killing whales just to get their blubber to uh, light homes. Anyway, the Drake well, ah, it started with a trickle, not a gusher. So, at 16 foot, that's about five foot deep, the hole began to collapse with loose gravel. So Drake devised uh, the idea of a drive pipe, as he called it. It was a 10 foot long or three meter joint of cast iron pipe, which he piled into the ground. Then at around about 32 feet, they hit uh, upper Devonian riceville formation shales. Now, the drilling tools were lowered through the casing or the conductor, as it's now known, and they started to drill ahead, and they made about three foot a day. This is pretty slow going, but it was pretty hard rock. So by April 1859, they'd spent the $2,500 that was the budget and was the AFE, as it's known, and Drake, he had to take out a $500 loan just to keep the operation going. On the 27th of August... 1859, the drill bits reached a total depth at nearly 70 foot. Then, around about that depth, they took a six inch uh, drilling break. Now, what that means is that the drilling string, it just sort of dropped very, very quickly and it dropped six inches. Now, that's often the sign you're in a very porous reservoir unit. And indeed, in this case, it was a porous Devonian sandstone. It was it's only some two and a half foot thick. It is called the Drake Sand now. Anyway, nothing much really kind of happened then. But the following morning, the driller, Billy Smith, he looked into the hole and he saw that the crude oil was, was seeping into the hole. So they started to pump it to the surface and they actually ended up collecting it in a bathtub estimated flow rate of about 10 to 25 barrels of oil per day. No gusher, but very, very significant. So the new technology that Drake had pioneered was actually the idea of casing to actually line the hole with a metal pipe. And this stopped the, the borehole from collapsing and allowed Drake to drill through these friable formations without any hole collapse or even the ingress of water into the well. So Drake's well near Titusville prompted the first wave of investments and additional drilling. Others started drilling in the Oil Creek region. Um, by 1872, the area was producing nearly 16,000 barrels of oil. Drake failed to patent his drilling invention and lost all his money on oil speculation in 1863. However, in 1872, I guess it was the state of Pennsylvania, awarded the crazy man an annuity of $1,500 he got some money anyway. And it was really the birth of the, the modern oil industry. 
So was it the first oil well? Well, when you look into it, it looks like Myanmar, China, Azerbaijan, Iran, Iraq, all had reports of oil and gas usage way back in history. And some say the the Baku oil field in Azerbaijan was amongst the first. It's shown on this map here. Baku, just on the western side of the Caspian Sea. There is also reports of wells that were being drilled for both salt and as water wells. Had encountered oil and gas shows back in the 1840s, uh, long before the uh, Titusville well, the Drake's well, was drilled. And then over in Poland, in Germany and in Canada, there were claims that there were uh, oil and gas shows. Now, natural gas from shallow wells was used in New York State as early as 1821 for lighting and heating. So, you know, it certainly wasn't the first hydrogen fossil fuel well, but it was significant because it was the first one. It was the the start of a of a new industry. Now, in terms of the geology, well, we've touched on what the reservoir age was, but Drake was a total wildcatter. He had no specific target in mind. There was no geological reasoning. It was simply that in the nearby Oil Creek region, there had been some seeps and some surface observations. And so that's what he used to locate the well. Drill for oil where you find it. Now, GeoExpro, half done Carstens here, indeed. He did a, an article way back in 2009. And uh, there's a link if you'd like to read that online. We could talk about Spindle Top. Not really going to go into this in any great detail, but another spectacular, interesting well that was drilled back in 1901. This was a gusher, and here's one of the wells on Spindle Top actually blowing out. And this is the crude going up in the air, hundreds of feet into the air. And uh, here's an explanation of the geology that you see. This salt diaper here, as we would call it today. And at the top of that, you get a lot of mineralization, a lot of different rock units which which all kind of get cemented up with halite with anhydrite with gypsum and the sands on either side of this salt diaper that's where we have the oil trapped against it and when you drill into that hey presto you get the spindle top discovery now i'm not going to go into the detail here so pause the video if you'd like to uh, read more information on spindle top or indeed on the uh, the drake well or on Edwin Drake himself, again, pause the video, or oh, here's uh, even the Wikipedia entry. We just want to put everything in one place. So to conclude, the Drake number one well was a true wildcat. No specific target in mind, but Drake just got lucky. He's a bit of a lad. So other videos in this series, uh, here's a few thumbnails here, shows what we've put out in the last year or so. And uh, if you want to find out any more information, we've got sort of the evolution of the offshore drilling rigs, all about the, the founder of modern geology and the sort of start of the whole sort of science of seismic. Now we've put those all together in a playlist, which is on the channel. Uh, so go there if you're interested in any of these and just maybe just watch them all. It's a good way to while away an hour and learn something about geology. Thank you for watching. Please give us a like, subscribe to the channel, ring the bell if you want to be uh, informed when we bring out a new video and uh, get in touch. There's the uh, information as always. Look forward to hearing from you. Take care. Bye for now. So other